Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us as we close out part our part two series of Winter is Coming, Get Ready for Year End Giving. I am your host and your chat facilitator, Lashika Phillips, and today's presenter is Michael Stein. Michael Stein, has he's been a writer and a digital strategist to progressive social causes for more than 20 years, and we are really, really glad to have him uh, to present today. Uh, we also have helping us with chat today is Susan Hopart. If you have any technical concerns or any issues, feel free to uh, chat your message out, and we will handle any issues that you have. Again, thank you so much, and happy Friday to to everyone. And as I mentioned, this is uh, Michael Stein, the digital strategist, and again, my name is Lashika Phillips. Before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk. So again, as I mentioned, if you have questions, um, even if you have questions during the webinar, uh, questions that you have for Michael, feel free to also chat those in the box, and we'll be sure to address those as well. Um, please also know that if you are on the phone, all of the lines are muted, and you must be online to chat. Um, also know that if you, for any reason, you lose connection, no worries. Simply rejoin the webinar by using the same link um, as before. And also, once the webinar is over, you will receive an email with links to today's presentation as well as recording. And be sure to check out our website, our new website, for all of our upcoming webinars at TechSoup.org. And as always, if you are on Twitter, please tweet and share what you are learning today. Um, you can tweet us at TechSoup or simply use the hashtag at TSWebinars. As some of you know, for those of you who are uh, not new, to TechSoup, you know that our mission is to build a dynamic bridge that really enables civil society organizations and social change agents like a lot of you that have joined us today to help you all gain effective access to all of the resources that you need to design and implement solutions for a more equitable world. And we are doing all of this outside of the sunny and bright San Francisco this morning. And we're really curious and we want to know, where are you uh, joining us from? So if you will please take a second, and in the chat box, this will also uh, help us to see who has any issues chatting out or using the chat box. So simply just tell us, where are you joining from? Wow, we have, we have learners from all over. I see Mexico and New York City and Washington, D.C., we really, really appreciate you all uh, joining us today. And uh, all of the places that you've listed, I've even seen Nashville. That's my hometown. Thank you all so much for joining. But I really want you to be aware that this map that you see before you and all of the places that I've mentioned and all of these places that people are chatting out, you know, this is where TechSoup all of these places that you see in, in the shaded blue area, these are the locations where TechSoup provides and facilitates donation programs. This is, this is pretty massive. And what we do is we partner with companies like Microsoft and Adobe and Cisco and, and all of the companies as you can see here listed right before you. We partner with them, and they help us to be able to provide all kinds of technologies and uh, resources from our website. And so what you can do to learn more, again, go to TechSoup.org. And I always recommend check out the Nonprofit Favorites section. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the new website, TechSoup.org, and uh, there is a new section there. It's called the Nonprofit Favorites section. So be sure to check that out. So Michael, as I mentioned, this this person, this bit, he is just a wealth of knowledge. And if you joined us for part one, uh, then you know that you are in store for even more information to really rock out the rest of this year with your organization. And uh, but for those who are not familiar with Michael, um, he has authored three books, 
and he has written several articles uh, about the rise of digital marketing, mobile, and online fund ra- fundraising. He's also a contributor for our TechSoup blog, and he also works as a consultant to coach other nonprofits and foundations and educators. So again, Michael, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, take it away. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Lashika, for, uh, for that introduction. Um, and um, hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Michael Stein coming to you from Northern California. It's great to see where everybody else uh, is from on that, uh, on that list. So that's great. Um, today, um, we're going to spend the next 25 minutes or so talking about year-end giving. Um, with a focus on digital strategies. And I hope that some of you were able to join us for Part 1 on November 17. And I actually wanted to start by doing a very quick review of what we covered in Part 1 just to set the stage, and I'm sure not all of you were able to be there. So here's what we covered in Part 1. Um, and we first we talked about planning for Giving Tuesday. And I hope that um, – uh, many or all of you um, were, had a successful Giving Tuesday campaign. If we had more time, I'd love to hear more about it. Uh, I mean, I know that Giving Tuesday can be challenging as a fundraising event, um, but I still think uh, it's an important opportunity for nonprofits, and I hope that many of you were able to take advantage of that. Um, we also, second and last time, we talked about preparing your website for year-end fundraising. We talked about the importance of putting content on your home page um, with clear calls to action and headlines. And we also talked a lot about pop-up light boxes uh, and other ways to feature content on your website. The third thing we covered was creating an email appeal series and just the importance of doing that um, across the month of December um, to create a story and to bring your, your donors along uh, for that experience. The fourth thing we talked about was the importance of engaging uh, your donors on social media and really the importance of doing multi-channel messaging uh, in the year end. And then the fifth thing we covered was just the importance of measuring everything you can um, just so that you know, we can learn as much as possible uh, year to year. So let's uh, quickly cover, uh, talk about what we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to talk, uh, first of all, about finding good spokespeople for your fundraising appeals. We're going to talk about using a challenge match to encourage giving. We're going to talk about promoting monthly giving in addition to one-time gifts. Uh, we're going to talk about mobilizing your email so that they're easy to read on mobile devices. And finally, we will close out by talking about the importance of optimizing your donation pages since that's where, that's where the money comes in. Um, great. So our first topic today is finding good spokespeople uh, for your year-end fundraising appeal. And I, I still think this is really one of the most critical elements to good storytelling at the year-end. Um, and being able – I mean, you're obviously going to write a good appeals, but it's really the storyteller, the person who – um, is presenting it, I think, who is really important. And this person speaks for you and um, is going to represent your work. Uh, and I just think it's really important to focus and find good folks to do that. And the question you're really asking yourself with these people is, you know, you know who, who can speak for you and really inspire your donors to give? So I think, you know, your traditional, um, I think your, you know, your, your, your traditional folks that you're going to be using as spokespeople are you know, going to be executive directors, they're going to be someone on your board, or they might be a project staff. And this example actually over here on the left um, is kind of a good example of a project staff. But I also you know, just want to encourage um, you to be creative about spokespeople. Maybe there's someone, a community member that you've worked with, a partner. Maybe there's like a volunteer who's been really active um, in the community and represents your work. And maybe there's even a donor um, who can also be a spokespeople and an author, um, either an email or be, have a picture on a website or something on social, maybe even do a video. So really, I just encourage you um, to be creative um, and really just try to be, try to be authentic um, as, you're, as you're coming up with your spokespeople. 
Um, another, co- I mean, a couple, another couple of examples. I, I always love this Jeff Bridges one from No Kid Hungry. I know not everyone has access to celebrities, but always, always a good example of how to put people just front and center um, in emails when you're doing um, fundraising. And here's two other examples from Mercy for Animals. Um, again, just you know, just the importance of figuring out, you know, how, how, to, how to put their voices um, front and center uh, and to connect them, you know, to the, to, the work, to the work that you're doing. So I think these are, these are good examples that I, wanted to, um, that I wanted to showcase for you. Okay, let's go on. Um, our second topic um, is uh, the importance of using a challenge match um, at the year end. Um, and you know the reason why you know you, you know we see so many of these challenge matches uh, is frankly is because uh, testing has shown us that it that it really works. It really makes an impact. Um, it catches people's eye, um, and uh, either in the subject line or in social or in or in other places. Um, and you know the, the important point is that you just want to get people to uh, to to make to make gifts. I mean. There's going to be lots of people who are going to be ready to give at year end, uh, and then there's going to be folks who are on the fence and not quite sure. So really, the, the the purpose of the challenge match is to get people to give a little bit more, and then also to get people to get off the fence who weren't thinking of giving and say, yeah, let, let, let me give a small amount because I know that it's that it's going to be doubled. Um, also, matches can work you know, on kind of at different giving levels, and it's important to sort of think a little bit about how to frame that. This example, by the way, over here on the right, which is from um, the Plowshares one a few years ago was actually for kind of a mid-level appeal to people on their file. So, you know, someone gets $75, it gets doubled, et cetera, et cetera. But these are slightly higher, you know, giving levels. So this is what I mean by if you're just going to your main, you know, your main donors um, or to people who have not given or people who are lapsed donors, you know, you may want to use examples that are a little bit lower, like a $10 gift gets us 20 or even a $5 gift gives us 10 so it's important to think um, about the, the giving levels. And of course, challenge matches, you, know, you can use those. Uh, you, know, you want to promote them throughout your, uh, your, your, um, your different uh, channels that you're using, email, um, on your website, and uh, in, on your social channels. And let, let me show you a couple of um, examples to, uh, to inspire you a little bit. So here's a challenge match that I, that I love, which was used by Berkeley Humane um, a couple years ago. Um, I thought this one was super clever. Uh, well, first of all, it wasn't just a double challenge match. It was a triple challenge match that they rolled out just for one day, um, which I thought was very smart. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, they were just able to, in a very kind of clever way, uh, you know, kind of focus on, you know, the, do- the animals, in this case the dogs, and sort of, you know, to tie it in. And I, and I just thought that was, uh, that was nicely done. And they tie it in clearly, like, you know, they need the money, especially at year end. Uh, because they have more animals in their shelters. And so I, I just thought the call to action um, was really strong here. Um, here is um, a quick example of a pop-up light box that features the, the, the match, um, a match challenge. Um, this one is from, sorry, the name of the organization does not appear here, but this is International Medical Corps. Um, I thought this one um, just was nice the way it kind of blends, you know, the call to action with a photograph. I mean, I tend to like it when these headlines, you know, talk a little bit more about the value proposition, you know, what the money goes towards. But I think, the, you know, the image is obviously strong enough and they're going out to the International Medical Corps community. I think people in that, in that case know, know a lot of what they do um, already. Um, uh, the other place that's important to promote the challenge match is like on the donation page, which is actually um, a super important place to put it that uh, you know, people are either clicking on an email or they're clicking on social. Uh, they've gone from a light box and they end up on the donation page. And so this is a good place to remind people of you know, what their gift, you know, uh, how they're going to get doubled. Or in this case, uh, in this example, they're getting, I don't know, are they getting three for one or four for one? I can't even... I think, it's, I think it's actually a four-for-one match, but it does say three-for-one. Anyway, um, but just you know, a, a good place. This is an example from Defenders of Wildlife uh, and just an important place to, to feature the match. Okay, our third topic is um, the importance of promoting monthly giving uh, during the year-end giving season. And this... Um, this is really an interesting topic for me recently just because uh, 
monthly giving, in other words, people not just giving a one-time gift of, say, $50, but giving a gift of $10 a month, which is then repeated every single month, it's just one of the fastest-growing types of giving, uh, charitable giving. Um, and the reason why, of course, it's popular is it you know, gives people the ability actually to give a little bit more, but to spread it out. So in these kind of lean times where people are giving to multiple charities, um, it's really a great way for people to give. It's very convenient. Um, people can put it on, a, you know, on one of their debit cards or a credit card, and it runs automatically, and people feel like they're, you know, they, can, they can make those gifts all, all year round. Um, and of course, you know, the, you know, the other from, from, a, from when you're managing a donation program, I mean, obviously you want, you, you know, it's nice to have bigger gifts at once, but it, it people, you know, the, the data shows that when people, you know, give smaller monthly amounts, then their value as a donor typically goes up. They tend to, to become donors longer. They stay longer on your file. Um, and then you typically raise more money from, from those, in, those, those individuals. Um, so again, the importance in monthly giving, I mean, it's important to try to, even when you're doing it year-end, I mean, when you're asking for a year-end fundraising gift, you don't have to just say, you know, make a gift of $25. You can say make a gift of $25 or $50, or give us a monthly gift and help us um, all year round. So you can, you can really kind of, uh, you can kind of massage that language a little bit to make that really, uh, really, really interesting. And super important to promote on, on the donation pages. So let me give you a couple of quick little examples here that I think are useful. Here's a good one um, uh, which, which talks about you know, becoming an investigator ally, donate monthly, and in fact they're combining a match with the monthly gift, which is actually kind of a pretty clever kind of approach there as a solution. Um, here is a good example of promoting monthly giving on a donation page. So this is actually a Giving Tuesday campaign. As you can see here, it's from the No Kid Hungry organization. And you know, they have the one-time button that's already highlighted, but they're also you know, very clearly promoting monthly giving right here as I'm highlighting for you. You can see the text. hope you can see this. It says, a monthly gift does even more to help hungry kids which I think is a really good way to promote monthly giving you know, within um, a, a year-end campaign. Um, and typically, of course, if people you know, click the monthly giving button, you know, these donation amounts below here you know, will, will change a little bit and get a little tiny bit lower. So in a perfect world, um, that, gives, um, that gives people a lot of great choices. Uh, another example, I have a couple of other quick examples of using pop-up light boxes to promote monthly giving. I mean, these two examples that I have here are not actually from the year end, um, but I think that they're just, uh, again, inspiring examples of how you can talk about making a monthly gift and the importance of just um, you know, hi highlighting whenever possible, you know, even, even during um, the year end year-end time frame. Okay, and then finally, um, I mean another approach that I've seen people use um, to promote monthly giving campaigns at the year-end is, you know, just to, just to talk about it actually as a, as a goal. So you don't only have to talk about, you know, we need to raise $10,000 um, this year-end. You can also talk about we need to, you know, we need to find 100 or 200 new monthly donors this year-end. So this idea of creating a monthly giving campaign uh, within the year-end framework is something that I'm seeing more and more of. I mean, you can do it at any time of the year, but obviously the year-end uh, season I think is a, is a perfect time uh, to do that. And I certainly encourage people um, to, give that, to give that a try. Okay, um, our fourth topic is uh, the importance of mobilizing your emails. In other words, making your emails mobile responsive. Uh, and I think this is particularly important um, during the year-end framework, the year-end time frame, principally because there is such a deluge of email uh, that, that are being sent out to prospective donors. And you know, more and more people, as you know, are you know, reading their emails, browsing their emails on their phones. Um, and so the importance of having mobile responsive emails just critical, of doing a little bit of testing, 
Um, if you create an email, you know, make sure you have people on your staff or some volunteers who can get a test message and can tell you, you know, gee, the image at the top is too small, or the text is too small, or I can't see the links, or the buttons are not visible. Just all that kind of testing um, is, is important. There are some platforms that you can use like Litmus and Email on Acid if you want to really get into the nitty-gritty of, um, of mobilizing emails. But even just doing some basic testing on your emails um, is super important. So this example, I'll show you on the next slide. I've got a couple of examples just to talk a little bit. So you've got this corporate exa accountability example on the left, the SETI Institute, and another corporate accountability. Again, these are just three classic examples of how to keep emails um, very simple with the design, uh, very easy to read on mobile devices. This one on the left here, as you can see, um, doesn't have really any images at all. Um, it has a button at the bottom. It's got links throughout the text. This one is going to read really nicely on a mobile device. The one in the middle, a little bit more fancy. It's got images. In fact, it even has a video at the top that's embedded here. You would have to click on it, which then takes you to a website to see the video. But as you can see, everything is centered in one column. Uh, and this is going to look really nice on a mobile device. Um, and the same thing with the one on the right. Uh, it, it's, again, all single column. Um, but again, I think just you know, ultimately the importance is making sure you know, these headlines are really easy to read, um, making sure that they're single column, that there's no fancy grids and layouts and stuff like that. Uh, and just to do the testing and to do it with a couple of volunteers or with your staff that are using some different types of phones, different types, of, different size screens. And I think that is going to help you get better performance out of your appeals. Uh, you're going to get, you know, people are going to be more, more happy to open your messages in the future. And then when they do open them, you're going to get more clicks on these links uh, and hopefully uh, raise more money um, as, as a result. Um, our Fifth uh, topic, an almost final topic, um, is just the importance of optimizing those donation pages, making them as good as you can, right? Because this is the, the, end of the end of the funnel. You, you're messaging people on email, on the web, on social media. People are clicking on your links. They're clicking on your emails. They're getting to these donation pages. And this is where you still have an opportunity to inspire people to give. And it's important, um, well, a couple things. One, it's important that when they get to the donation page, that all the messaging and all the visuals and everything that's there is matching the fundraising messaging that you've got as they're coming from other locations, from the web, from email, from social. So that your headlines should be the same. The is images should be either the same images or similar images, but it should all kind of interconnect nicely. Um, certainly, uh, the, the photos, I, you know, Web, I, I believe donation pages should have really strong photos uh, to create good emotional, uh, con, you know, emotional feelings among, among prospective donors. And anytime you can sort of reduce the clutter, um, keep these donation pages as simple as possible, those are all going to be elements that are going to improve your conversion rate and lead to raising more money. Let's take a couple of quick looks at a few of them. Um, here's a really nice one from the International Medical Corps. I really love this um, headline and value proposition here at the top of this page. You are instantly reminding people you know, why that donation is going to save lives and relieve suffering around the world. I think this is really, um, really helpful. You've got a strong photo here. Uh, you've also got examples uh, and so, um, of, of what the, the of the impact that their donation is going to make on the work. So this is a, this is a terrific page. Here's a nice one also from Care, um, just recently from their um, from their recent uh, Giving Tuesday campaign. I really love the way that they do this little feature mission statement uh, and show people where the money goes towards. Since they're a big global charity, I think they're always just trying to make sure that that's um, clear out there. Um, so these are, these are nice ones here. Here's another, um, another really nice uh, donation page from the, recently from the National Museum of African American History. I mean, they were doing a Giving Tuesday appeal, which included, you know, get this, get this wonderful hat to show your pride in the museum. And they have the hat on the donation page, which I think is just so important. You're connecting the dots with the donor. You know, um, when they get here, they're, they're seeing the gift that they presumably were interested in. Um, 
So I think that's nicely done. Um, and then here is another example from Food and Friends. I just think this is you know, nice and big, clear design. Boy, is this a nice, simple donation page. Um, I don't know what platform they're on, but uh, I think this one is going to look super nice on mobile devices and hopefully uh, lead to uh, good response rates and, and lots of good, good fundraising. Um, and then I will just throw in a quick bonus um, sixth topic, because I always like to talk about measuring things and just want to reinforce um, the importance of measuring and capturing analytics and data. So the key things are um, certainly uh, you know, what, what worked this year, what worked better than last year. So you're just trying to understand year over year you know, where the differences were, which one of your email appeals raised more money, um, you want to compare issues like the money you've raised, the number of donors that gave, and then the average gift, and help you to draw some conclusions about you know, how different appeals on different dates um, had better performance. Hopefully if you've done the monthly donor recruitment or promotion, that is an, probably an important area to be measuring. Um, you know, did we get more monthly donors this year than last year? What did we do differently? Um, how can we improve in the future? Um, you certainly want to look at your different audience segments and just understand you know, which audience segment did best. I mean, you're, you may be dividing your audience in various ways. They could be small donors, lapsed donors, old donors. Uh, they could be your monthly giving donors. They could be mid-level. They could be non-people who have never given. Um, so you, can, you want to look at performance across um, all those different areas. Or you may be measuring performance by uh, how you acquired people's email addresses uh, if you did it with a certain project or with a partner. Uh, you certainly want to be measuring traffic to your donation pages if you can. Um, where did, how did people get to your donation pages? If you can measure people who came from email click-throughs, people who came from social media promotion, uh, or people who just you know, came just to your website just completely organically, if you can measure that, those different types of traffic, that gives you a, a wealth of information that helps you learn about um, what's working for you. And then if you can measure it, um, uh, the conversion rate on your donation page, in other words, you know, of the people who reach your donation page, how many complete a donation? Um, I mean, the average, you know, believe it or not, is, is way below 50%. Only half the people who get there are going to give. So this, uh, this is a good uh, measurement item and for you to keep learning about. And then finally, you know, just a, always, always focusing on an understanding how your social media presence is impacting your revenue. So if you're able to have like one donation page, for example, that's just for click-throughs from social media, that would allow you to track that, for example. Um, so I think that's a, another uh, really useful thing to be measuring. And that gets us all the way to the end. So I will um, thank you and uh, turn it back over to Lashika or Susan for any, um, any other items you want to cover today. Wow, thank you again, Michael. Uh, thank you so much. So again, another day of a lot of information for all of the learners and the organizations that have joined us today to really go back to their office and, and maybe pull one item from, from your presentation today and possibly implement for, for the year end. Now we do have a couple of questions before we close out. Um, you mentioned a platform for mobilizing um, the emails. Can you repeat that? Sure. There's two platforms. I mean, one is called litmus, L-I-T-M-U-S dot com. And another one is called emailonacid.com. I know, a strange name. I didn't make it up. <laughs> um, but both of those are places where you can upload an email, and then it will show, show you how the email will be rendered and viewed on different types of mobile devices and different types of email, uh, which are really useful to understand uh, you know, how your emails are going to be perceived okay. on mobile. Okay, and the other questions, um, I think we have two, two more questions. Um, a couple of questions about the match. Um, this, from where will the match challenge come from, the money come from? And, yeah. and then he's asking, will they have to line up someone to actually match the donation amounts? Um, someone else is also asking about advice on how to get uh, match donors. Sure. So 
the, typically the, uh, a challenge match is obtained from, um, you know, one of your larger donors in your community. So it might be someone on your board. It might be, you know, someone who's a founder of your organization. It might even be a business partner um, or it might be a, a funder. Uh, but basically it's someone who steps forward and says, yeah, I, I want to put, you know, a $5,000 gift or, or more or less. Uh, and I want to challenge, you know, people in the donor community, um, and I'll match all gift, you know, up up to this amount. And so, therefore, you can, you know, you you, you can use that as part of the messaging. Um, I've seen, oftentimes, I often see boards, uh, board of directors that step forward to offer that kind of stuff. But it, I've also seen businesses do it as well. So it, it, they can come mm -hmm. from various different locations. Okay, now Joanne here, she brings up a, a great point. She says that nonprofits um, associated with ministry are exempt from matching gifts. So she wants to know if you have any thoughts or suggestions on how they can, what they can do. Um, yeah, that is so a for good faith -based. question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I okay. don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I'd probably turn to her and ask her for some, for some ideas. I mean, I would imagine that there's other strategies at year end. That, that you know that 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 may work best, uh, mm -hmm. but I was not aware that, that that didn't work. That was not allowed in the ministry. Sorry about that. Okay, and we will send um, we will send the links out, and you will re receive a recording. And uh, Michael, can you go ahead and share your contact information if anyone wants to reach out to you? Um, yeah, I mean, I think probably the best thing would be to reach out to me either on Twitter, which I'm I'm M Stein six three on Twitter. Um, okay. Or you can just go to my website, which is michaelstein.net. Um, that's michaelstein.net, and there's a way to, you know, to, to, to message me, uh, contact me over there. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I do see a couple of other questions coming in, and we will email you the responses to those questions. We want to go ahead and realize that we are a little bit over time, and we really I want to respect everyone's time and appreciate you all for joining. Again, Michael, thank you so much for all of this valuable information. And um, before we go, if we do have one second. If the people who have participated today, if you want to chat out one thing that you've learned, um, a takeaway from today, or if there was something that you feel that your organization can take and implement today or maybe even next week, um, feel free to share that out. We would really, really want to know uh, what you're planning to do with this information and if it has been um, really valuable for you. Uh, so <clears throat> before we go, I want to – show you the upcoming webinars that we have. We have one on December the 19th. It's actually part three of a series uh, for libraries going deeper with social media. And then when we come back for the new year, we're going to get started on January 9th with Adobe Design. And you're going to learn tips and tricks for your next annual report. And then later in the month, we're going to give you some information and give you a great tour of our Grant Station program, and then we'll follow up on the very next day with even more information about Grant Station. So thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining us. We will follow up via email with the link and recording from today's webinar. And uh, in the meantime, don't forget to check out the TechSoup.org website, and you can find our upcoming webinars and our archives here at the link shown on your screen here, techsoup.org forward slash community forward slash events dash webinars. And thank you again to our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk.